So Now it's official. No. <laughs> yes, so welcome everybody. It's so nice to see you all here this morning. Um, we will uh, today we will have uh, two short lectures uh, regarding uh, entrepreneurship and uh, regarding marketing. Um, and uh, before everything, uh, I thought that uh, it would be nice uh, to meet you all. So uh, please, uh, I want you to introduce yourself and um, uh, it would be nice to share your ideas uh, and uh, why are you here? What do you want to do in Croatia or uh, what is your business idea and um, stuff like that? Oh, you can share whatever you want. So um, <laughs> last time when we had lunch uh, of our um, incubator, uh, Hilal was there and she shared the, her idea. So uh, Hilal, maybe you can start. <laughs> uh, and um, so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so. okay. If you're finished, I'm starting. Yes, you can start. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. My name is Hilal. I am from Turkey, but I studied in Croatia for two years to do my MBA studies. And while doing my MBA studies and while writing my thesis, actually, I started to look for a job in Croatia, but I'm a third country national migrant, so I couldn't find it. And since May 2021, I am developing a project for Croatia. How we came here with my teammate Zeynep, let me introduce it briefly. So uh, we attended to a hackathon. And in that hackathon in three days, we just came up with that idea. And based on my story, based on my job application problem in Croatia, that issue, we developed this project. So now we call ourselves as Migrapreneurs and we would like to encourage the third country national migrants of Croatia either to become an entrepreneur in Croatia or find jobs. So we would like to be a go-to place and be a bridge between the employers and the employees, migrant employees of Croatia, and help them with the uh, tools that we would like to develop. We are thinking of an educational platform. We are thinking of uh, some other stuff. Also, we are aware of the uh, net emigration, negative net emigration rate of Croatia. So young Croatians are leaving the country and this is another big issue. This is undermining the economy because they are going abroad for better and more attractive opportunities. So there is a huge brain drain issue in Croatia. And we would like to convert this brain drain into brain gain and heart gain. I think that's all what I can say for now. And it's great to see you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Hilal, for sharing. Um, Trixi, maybe you can continue. You already yeah. talked with Mariana. <laughs> <laughs> I can, hold on. I'm just moving around. So let me stop moving. <laughs> And you can see me better. The internet is <clears throat> catchy here. Hi, yes, so I'm Trixie Buckingham and about six years ago I came to Croatia, um, but uh, previous to that I had been here. So about, oh man, maybe it's about 15, 16, 17 years ago that I came for the first time and visited with some friends and um, and then uh, my daughter came with me uh, at the second time, just a year after that. And she was about 10 years old. And the whole time she was um, asking me since then, can we move to Croatia? Can we move? And so we came um, more of just kind of like tourists and to enjoy, but we really love it here. And we have um, established our roots here at this point. We gave up everything back in the US. So um, that may sound crazy to a lot of you, but, um, it's what we felt like we needed to do. So I'm here now. Um, I've had a lot of experience uh, working in a lot of different um, capacities with uh, nonprofits, with Catholic community services, with literacy volunteers. 
And I've come to the point where um, I have, I have the, the skill set that I can manage and run um, a, a language school. And so that was my uh, business idea. I'd like to uh, not just have a language school, which I see there's plenty of here, which give great English. Um, I'll say that, that it's really good quality. But what I'm really interested in is expanding not just to the community that would like to learn English, but those who struggle as well, because we have um, a lot of people who need help um, outside of the school system here. And there's just really, I see a need for a lot of specific needs that are not being met at all in, in the Croatian school system and outside of the school system. So yeah, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Can right. I ask a question? Yeah, you okay. can. Okay, so do you also think of uh, including the people who are living in the rural areas of Croatia? Because I guess they also have struggled to, um, you know, reach to the sources for learning English. Yeah, so the idea of the, the business setup is that I can make a profit and if I can make a profit or if I can structure it in an NGO uh, way, that, the thing is, right, is that I need residency to be here or, or a valid work permit to stay. And I'm in jeopardy of, of that all being lost by the summer. So I need to establish something. And it's, it's crazy what they're asking for for a startup. I mean, they want me to put 200,000 Kona in. Okay, sure, I have an investor that will do it. But now I have to commit to hiring three Croatians. But if I have native speakers, they're not always going to be with a Croatian passport. So it's and what they're asking is really heavy. So I don't know. What I, eventually, what I would like to do is have an outreach program that we can reach. Uh, my original thought was, I want to start with orphanages. My brother was adopted. That's really near and dear to me. I'd like to give them a hand up and then and then reach out to communities that can't make their way in. Yeah, that's definitely something on my list, but we have to start with, we've got to make the money. We've got to bring the money in somehow in order to make that sustainable. Okay, one little comment as migrapreneurs, we are trying to change this rule. I mean, it will take a lot of efforts. It's a country level, macro level thing, but we are very dedicated. Hopefully we will solve this, fingers crossed. Yeah, because it's it's fine for a great big company coming in that already is established, exactly. but it's not at all helpful for something like me. It's a huge burden. It would, it would kill us within a month or two to just have these guarantees that we have to make. It's, yeah, <laughs> I'm with you. I'll help you in any way I can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We all will help each other. Yeah, good. Well, that's the point of uh, this. Uh, so I'm very glad to hear that. Uh, oh, we can continue. Um, Sapron, uh, did I pronounce it right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm Saffron. I'm Trixie's daughter. Um, <laughs> The one who's asking me every year if she can come to Croatia. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm currently at the Academy of Fine Arts here in Zagreb. I study graphic arts and my business plan is actually to uh, start a business uh, with making t-shirts and bags and patches and all sorts of accessories uh, with artist artwork on it. So I like to put my art and print it and sell it and things like this and even um try to use like non-toxic dyes and like use dyes from plants like I was making pomegranate dye from pomegranate skin and everything like that and try to be more green and more supportive of local artists and even when I uh, have the chance to start it and make it really running I want to put the little pop-up stores in other stores like if uh, another comp uh, locally made company starts they're really small I want to put, uh, put a pop-up of my uh, shirts or something in there to bring more awareness to their pop-up uh, to their new uh, stores and show to get more um, visual and more customers to help bring it great uh, mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> Thank you, um, Janita. Yes, hello. Um, I, I welcome all of you. 
And uh, I wanted to say that I joined this um, event because I wanted to hear uh, more about um, entrepreneurship because I'm, I'm third year now uh, studying um, economics and business in Hungary and I'm an immigrant as well. Uh, so I wanted to hear like other opinions and thinkings. I do not have like specific um, business plan for um, startups, uh, but I think maybe during this <laughs> it will develop. And uh, I, I don't know, I think it's just you know, nice to um, be in a meeting and um, meet all of you and exchange opinions as well. So I think it will be useful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, uh, the, uh, Mr. from Iraq, I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm not sure if I know how to pronounce your name right. Uh, so, yes, yes, yes. Okay. My name is an Arabic name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, so, uh, my name is Yahya. Y a h y a. First name, it's first name, my name. Uh, uh, I, okay. I, I, I came from Iraq and uh, I living here uh, about uh, five years. Uh, 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 my courage is, uh, you know, my, um, uh, what, what can I say? My courage is not advantage for everything. I'm courage for military of courage. That's why I have problem to make a business. I I didn't work uh, uh, work before anything uh, about um, um, you know like business like workers like anything uh, that's why I have a problem to to make any job here um, so I'm I'm trying to make uh, some shop me and uh, my friend here uh, but you know this the uh, it does need uh, too much work to make the uh, the paper and um, uh, uh, you know the bureaucratic <laughs> every, every anywhere the bureaucratic and um, uh, we just want to start we just want to start but uh, we don't make sure if we're successful or not. We don't want lost uh, lost anything. <laughs> yeah. Yes, ah, that's it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. We. If, we understand. If, any, if if any question you you want to ask me, uh, uh, my my uh, uh, my English it is okay. It is well, but it is not perfect. Too much. <laughs> Great. It's great. Don't no, worry. You're doing well. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't open my camera to see me. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. <laughs> okay. Um, no problem. Don't worry. Um, uh, thank you. Um, uh, you're welcome. Uh, it's not open. Not start. I don't know why. No, don't worry. It's good that we can hear you, and afterwards yes. we will see you when when it decides to work. Don't worry. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, on this call is also uh, Philip. Philip is uh, our volunteer and. Um, Jelko, who will tell you something about marketing. Uh, we will mm. start with uh, Mariana. Uh, she will tell you something uh, mm. regarding entrepreneurship. Uh, and uh, mm. my name is Marusha. Uh, you know me, <laughs> maybe okay. through emails or something. Yeah, uh, yeah through the emails. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a part of this project. And uh, besides that, uh, I have uh, my own little firm for um, public speaking and communications. That's okay. something about me. <laughs> so uh, uh, we will uh, we can continue now with um, uh, the Mariana's presentation. Uh, as I said, she will tell us something about an entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs. So uh, Mariana, I think you can start. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. I loved your presentations because it, it gave the right intro to what I want to say 
and share with you. I remember, I will uh, basically share the screen so we can follow the, the, um, the, the lecture together. It's more or less uh, interactive. It's not envisaged to be, uh, uh, as we say, uh, um, let's say, just just have to something that you can uh, go through to look at. Um, basically, we have um, today's topic is entrepreneur and personality. The entrepreneur has to have the ecosystem that has to be around the, the entrepreneur. Each of you, when presenting his idea and wishes, was basically talking about this. Each of you has its own dreams or wants to try something new. As Hilal said, she is very ambitious and I love her project because it's migrant entrepreneur. And all the obstacles that Trixie mentions are also the ones that anybody who is trying to do anything new has to basically um, skip over or flatten or work around. Or as Janita says, she doesn't even know what, why uh, she wants to learn more about entrepreneurship and she doesn't have an idea, but nevertheless, as Yahao said, uh, he would like to open a shop or some small business with his uh, colleagues. And he basically wants to know how to do it. L nevertheless, the obstacles like bureaucracy and the administration and the huge pile of papers that you will be always asked to bring there are still things that are within your control and within your uh, ability to to change them and that could uh, those uh, things could help you have more um, success uh, or to be more able to to succeed in whatever you wish to do so uh, my first slide basically uh, talks about who are you. I don't know why I can't have the presentation mode, but nevertheless, we will survive like this. Um, each of you said something about yourself. And this is uh, really important because um, in entrepreneurship, you are all on your own, all over the, 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 the path you are developing. And basically the, the biggest struggles that you will have to endure and the biggest uh, challenges that you will have to uh, uh, go through are the ones that you are taking with yourself. You will have to go outside your comfort zone. You will have to test your, um, I would say, not just set of skills, but also your beliefs, your values. And you will have to um, endure stuff that nevertheless uh, uh, might seem that they will kill you, but you will survive and you will go through them. The thing is that um, entrepreneurship is, um, a, there is always a, a constant um, a discussion whether you can become an entrepreneur or a person is an entrepreneur. And let me tell you a story. When I went to my MBA classes in 2015, 16, I had, um, a professor of entrepreneurship who gave us a test where basically you answer like 80 questions and you get some kind of estimation whether you are a person that needs to be a part of a team to function to bring the best out of it whether you are a person that could basically lead a team so it's in between entrepreneurship and and uh, regular employment or you are a completely standalone human being who is basically so um, eager to do his own stuff his own way that he cannot be happy within the system any kind of uh, established corporate business or any kind of other business i would and i was basically uh, that was the moment when i realized that each of us can change through his life while i did the same test in 2009 and my results are more corporate leader than entrepreneur and when I did it in 2015 I was pure entrepreneur and it, that was basically the reason that I decided to leave the, the law firm and open my own loan office and I can only tell you that I would never return to any kind of structure because it's so rewarding to be your own boss though it's super hard but nevertheless this is something that it goes with your personality. And when you decide to go on that truth, on that path, 
on that road, you are basically just living whatever, um, um, you are authentic and, and you live um, your own, uh, I would say, life the way you want to, to live it. And this is um, basically, I believe that each of you are in, in some kind of uh, uh, stage between corporate leader and let's say like that and, and regular entrepreneurs. And we are here just to make you aware of those differences and also to support you, to provide you uh, some kind of platform of support and networking and put you um, in uh, situations where you will be um, able to test your own abilities, your skills, and also uh, nevertheless, if after this program you will go for your idea or you will decide to do it in five years or maybe in five months, you will still have all uh, the realizations and ba basically the, the test that you uh, did with yourself that will help you uh, once you um, decide to become an entrepreneur to, to succeed. Uh, so who is the entrepreneur? As we said, sorry. Somebody has to say something and please do comment and, and ask questions. And I, I expect you to be as active as you were in the beginning of the, the, the session. So if anybody wants to add something, comment, criticize, please do. No, okay. So well, who what? is entrepreneur? <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, 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 please do, Marusha, <laughs> nobody. So uh, now we have also the question. So um, maybe Hilal or, or I don't know, uh, uh, Yahao or uh, can share with us, what do you think who entrepreneur is in your opinion? How would you define that person? Very difficult to define, but I mean, I can say it's more like something that you have in your soul. It's like your spirit, but of course, mm -hmm. this is not enough because action is also taken in order mm -hmm. to achieve and create something. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I like it. It's something within your soul. It's good. Um, anybody else has different opinion? or different perception or entrepreneur or maybe a like a person who has I'm, enough I'm, uh, I'm, sorry okay sorry sorry sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Go, ahead. Janita, go, go ahead go ahead Janita, once go ahead. again please go uh, a person who have have enough courage to take risk and to achieve its goals great and and you how you wanted to say something uh, i'm i'm uh, i wanted to say i'm just listening to no uh, 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 what uh, what you have to say? <laughs> I just listening now. <laughs> okay, good, good. I I love the part with the courage. So it's something within our soul. It's something uh, uh, that has to do with courage. Any other uh, um, comments? Who wants to make a change? Good. That's very important. Thank you. Thank you, Saffron. Definitely, because within the existing solutions you think that you can bring a twist, you can do something disruptive that can make a change to the person uh, uh, starting a business, to the community, to the users. I love also that. So these are definitely the things that I'm looking for. So um, this is actually that uh, things that <clears throat> in, there are like, I would say millions of different uh, websites, web pages, researches, books on entrepreneurship. And, and the thing that you usually, the characteristics that you all mentioned, so something within, something intrinsic within your soul, as Hilal said, or the, or the courage, as, as Janita says, or um, uh, drive to, to do something different, to change the, the original status, as Saffron said, these are basically all attributes. And, and I have, on this slide, a number of them also listed. Things like bold, that could definitely go into courage, rational and practical. This is something that entrepreneur really has to be. It, it, though you might, I always say to all the startups that I'm mentoring, you may have the dream as huge as Milky Way, as Galaxy, and that's completely okay. Moreover, it's necessary, but you have to think in small steps. That's why you have to be rational and practical and focused on the exact thing that you want to reach. And you have to build 
step by step the final solution but never forget the big goal that you have and though there will be people that will say it's impossible you can't do that don't don't care about them because just focused on small steps and gradually uh, you will come there this is always when you go um read in, in the papers or listen to the interviews you always have it was an overnight success and it's so funny because when you talk to the people who are behind that overnight success, they say it was like 17 years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago, seven years ago. So I always say it was uh, overnight success, but only the night was seven or 15 years long. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance, a lot of ability to change yourself and also to change the status quo. And um, that at the end, uh, might result in, in uh, um, making your dream come true, but literally making your dream come true. That's why you have to have this, as Janita says, courage. And as Shafran said, uh, um, being able to be uh, disruptive, to, to, to lead the change, because you have a vision and you want to, to do everything you can to accomplish that vision. Uh, original is definitely something that I see in each of you, and this is something that you should never give up on. So originality or authenticity that each of our, each of you has, as Hilal said, it, it's something within your soul. It's the way you perceive the world and the way you uh, express yourself. And this is what makes you different than um, others. I always tell if there are like four hairdressers or four bars in the same street and you decide to open the fifth one. And everybody would say, uh, it's stupid because there are already four bars in the street who will come to you. But still, if you are authentic uh, and the way you will do uh, the creations, the offerings to your client in that bar, you still may have that factor X that would prevail. Also, um, when it comes to originality and authenticity, it's something that um, I would say uh, if we have two persons like me and Marusha decided to open, um, I don't know, start a new company and the company will have the same offering. Marusha will do PR and I will do PR. And um, if I do PR my way, and Marusha does PR her way, we are in a much better position to succeed because we are authentic and we are true to ourselves than if I'm trying to um, emulate Marusha. I have to be aware of what Marusha is doing because she is my direct competition and we are basically starting the, the businesses in the same uh, 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 industry. We will have the same, comp uh, same basically the same clients. But nevertheless, it doesn't mean that I will succeed or Marusha will not succeed or vice versa, just because we are uh, the same or not the same. The thing is that we have to remain authentic and we have to be focused, oriented on execution and go for ever what we are wanting to achieve. So this is something that is super crucial. The small steps that we have to take every day that we the, the steps that were not imposed by others but there are basically the steps that we decided to take we have to be that um let's say true to ourselves that we commit to the final goal and that we execute daily and then if we see that we can't do that we go back and we say okay there is some reason that i can't move this thing forward for the moment, I will give up on this goal and I will just focus on another one, but I will still work on my execution. And this is crucial. And, and you have to learn something that is even more uh, uh, important in startup world. This is something that is called failing fast uh, because you have to iterate as uh, fast as possible. You have to do your mistakes as quickly as possible and learn from each of it. So don't um, um, analyze too much and, and write A, B, C scenario, just go for it. 
And, and once you see that the things are not working, try the other way around. Because th the quicker you are responding to the needs of your client, there is better a chance that you will succeed. If you uh, are too persistent and using the so same old ways that are not giving results, there is a great jeopardy that your business endeavor, your entrepreneurship idea will not uh, uh, be successful because you will, in a way, because you are just overthinking too much, stop yourself for, from being successful. And this is something that also happens because we are, as uh, Hilal said, it's without, within our soul, if we say like that, but we are our own enemies. So we have to really be aware of the fact that we are the ones who make us um, do something. And also we are the ones that stop us from doing something. So you have to be honest to yourself and take all the blame for your successes and for your uh, failures. And not uh, to be too strict with yourself, but to uh, use each failure as a learning opportunity and go for it. Just try something else and go for it. You also have to be really perceptive. You have to see what is going on. What are the trends in the market? What your clients need? What brings value to, the, to, to your users? You have to be direct. You have to be clear in your goals. And among um, other things, the most important thing is to be sociable, to surround yourself with people that share the same values that are supportive. And this is also the reason why you very important. Uh, uh, all of you that joined us today make, will make a small ecosystem and we will do best as mentors to, to help you to investigate your ideas and maybe to launch your business at the end of this program. And this is something that is very, very important. So you have to be basically um, a people person and this will definitely help your uh, uh, business idea come to life. Things um, that usually um, are also part of entrepreneurship uh, uh, personality that are not so, let's say, favorable to the entrepreneurs are um, one of the, the, I would say, personality traits that are listed here on this slide. And this is being insensitive or impatient because you want to see your uh, results as soon as possible. This is risk prone. Um, it's both, um, I would say, um, it's a benefit, it's a good trait, but it's also, um, it can sabotage you. So this is something if you are just uh, failing fast and not learning from your, just taking risks too, too quickly and not learning from your uh, uh, mistakes, then you are in a position that you will basically destroy your business uh, um, uh, um, uh, story, you have to be structured because being unstructured means that any road, road or any path is good, but you have to say you have to stay on the path that you envisaged. You have to be focused on the small steps that you want to uh, do, and that if the step is not working, go back, revise it, and do another step. But don't change the 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 story inconsistently all the time. Uh, you also may miss the bigger picture because if I decided to open the bar and I am not, as you remember from the beginning of the story, there are four bars in the same street. And for some reason after six months, I didn't manage to find the right customers in that street or nobody wants to buy my special uh, chocolate with the um, African spices. And they, the kind of customers that come to this street is basically the kind of customers that want to have regular coffee and, and some uh, um, beer. Then I have to see that maybe the location or the offering I'm offering to my clients is not the one that they want. And maybe my solution is not the solution that the market needs in that moment. So I have to basically um, revisit my decision and, and adjust it. And if it's not working, give up. And this is also very crucial to be able to decide when you have to give up without making further uh, uh, losses. In economy, there is uh, one um, term that it's called sunk costs. And these are basically all the resources, your time, money, 
um, uh, everything that you put in one project. And because you have put so much of your time and money and all of your resources into that particular thing, you are reluctant to give it up. So you basically uh, try for months or even years to make it come to a life, though you can see that it's going nowhere because you own that expense, your that ex resources and that time. And it's very hard because when you are an entrepreneur, you live 24 seven. So every day, seven days a week, you live that uh, uh, um, life. And it's very hard when you realize that uh, basically it's going nowhere. But if you reframe it and think about all the lessons that you learned, and that the second uh, uh, business idea, the second endeavor you will start will basically go much quicker, easier and swifter because all the things that you did in the first uh, uh, project that didn't succeed, uh, then you will learn through your failures and you will not be in a position to, to basically uh, own the, the project that is going nowhere but you will be able to adapt, to adjust, and to try something else. Sometimes it's enough to do a small twist, and sometimes you have to reshuffle everything. And this is the reason why it's super important, we'll talk afterwards about that, to have the right ecosystem. So the people around you, immediate uh, surroundings, and also the, the broader surroundings that will help you when you go to this, uh, uh, um, through these phases. Something uh, here that has to be uh, said aloud is that just being a migrant makes you at the very start more successful than any other entrepreneur. Because uh, you probably know that the, uh, when you go to the uh, Forbes 500 list of companies or you go to any um, um, global table and you go to see who are the most successful people, today in the business world, you can see that among top 10 or top 100, most of them, like 55% in America, for example, are migrants. And this is something that makes you, and don't forget that, in, in the much better position than the regular uh, uh, startup founder, the regular entrepreneur. Because uh, you know that people uh, who, I don't know, the, the, the founder of, um, Apple was migrant. Uh, Elon Musk is also of a migrant background. You know that, uh, I don't know, the guys who, who founded eBay or the guy who, who basically uh, established Pfizer. So just think about most of the most successful companies in the world, and you will see that behind those companies in, with a very, very high probability, there is a migrant at the beginning. And I found a new article from Harvard Business Review that added another layer of the explanation why it happened. So it's not just that when a migrant comes to a host country that there are things like labor market discrimination or selective immigration policies or availability of specific opportunities within ethnic groups. Things that uh, Trixie mentioned, or uh, things that uh, Hilal found, why trying to to basically tackle the obstacles that stand uh, on her uh, um, uh, road, or what Jaha said, um, the bureaucracy and administration that is hard and exists for each entrepreneur, but with migrants you have completely a new layer of of problems, not just language, but also the problem of recognition or whatever uh, certificates, references, education you already have, the way they treat you just because you don't have a regular residency or you, you don't have the right citizenship and stuff like that. But also another layer that proved to be, um, I would say, thing that brings more uh, um, chance that you will succeed as entrepreneur. And that this is the reason that I really love that you joined us today and that you will be participating in our problem is that you have right personality that is risk prone, meaning the good risk prone, not the, the wrong risk prone. So you are more um, ready to take risks 
and therefore you are more ready to succeed. And we, were, we are here to help you to use that um, ability to be more risk prone for your advance, to fail faster and to use the best you have within yourself. And, and uh, this is not, this slide is not here because I want to inspire. I just want to make you sure that you are aware that you are already in a better position than any other uh, a person who is not vibrant and who is thinking about starting his own business. So be aware of that. You already have something within yourself that makes your uh, uh, road easier, uh, though it might not seem easier, but easier compared to the regular person who is not migrant because you have this and this is scientifically proved. So it's not just me jabbering and talking about it. This is it. So I believe that each of you has this within yourself and I can hear from your own stories that you definitely are that kind of uh, 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 um, group of people that is more able to succeed in the world of entrepreneurship. Um, usually when we talk about how the, the the road of success looks it's i love this slide and and you probably saw this uh, many times that we we have a big idea and then we start planning and we only think that we need somebody to invest in us and then we will make it and it will be overnight success usually it's not like that and this is where the charm is this is basically the journey that makes it all worthwhile and you will hear during the program, uh, Marusha, and, and we will bring a lot of people who already have successful business uh, endeavors. And when they will talk about the way they succeeded, it will be like this. It will be like 20 different loops, uh, 3 million times when they decided that they are going to give up. And still they didn't. They persisted and they um, managed to, to endure and to succeed what they were uh, not maybe what they initially envisaged, but what along the way beca became their business endeavor. And um, as Saffron said, uh, uh, entrepreneurs can't stay still or s be uh, bystanders because they can clearly see that they have something that could make, that could bring value and that can change the life of the persons involved. And if you are that kind of person, you definitely have so huge intrinsic uh, uh, um, pressure to do it, to go for it. You, you really have to do it. Otherwise you will be constantly unhappy with the works that you are doing with the current employer or trying to help somebody else do his own business idea. So I would say that, um, this is something that definitely is a trait that is required to, to, um, for each entrepreneur to have this uh, clear vision that you can change the things uh, for the better. And you don't know how to do it. You only know that you have to do it. And the way you are going to establish how you are going to do it is simply by try, trying and failing. It's as easy as it is, like child walking. Uh, when you start as a toddler, you, you basically crawl, you don't know how to get up, then you find some kind of firm uh, um, piece of furniture or something that you can stand on and, and hold on. And then you dare to walk one or two uh, steps alone and then you fail and then you start again and you, it, and you do it like 100, 200, 300 times a day and then you, tomorrow you're a little a little bit better and then within a month or two you're basically walking alone and then gradually you, you start running and this is basically how the entrepreneurship journey looks like um this is i would say the most crucial part uh, of entrepreneurship uh, uh, story it's the ecosystem the the people you have to surround yourself with the um, community that will uh, basically enable you to go forward. 
I, I put this on next slide. Uh, what was this is something that usually we forgot to do. We forgot to put ourselves on the first place. And, um, and that's why I was talking about the, the desired personality traits and of each entrepreneur. And this is the ones that we talk about uh, five minutes ago are just like um, few of them. And I believe that if I give you a piece of paper, each of one would, each of you would put another 20 different traits that you think that are important for the entrepreneurs or maybe some uh, weaknesses that are equally important for their success. And this is all true. And I would never dare to say that my version of the personality traits uh, or the weaknesses for the entrepreneur is better than yours because each of us is uh, its own uh, uh, person and has its own uh, set of values, intrinsic goals and the way we perce perceive the world. And that's why, as I said before, the most important person in your life is really you. And you always have to um, examine whatever you do and reflect on your values and the way you feel like about certain uh, uh, stuff you do. Also, um, the, the biggest battles in life that you will have as entrepreneurs will be the ones with yourself. So this is the reason you have to learn if you don't already to communicate with yourself and to be able to clearly, uh, um, let's say, to be on your own side and help yourself to, 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 succeed, to succeed. Also, um, when in my case, uh, the immediate uh, uh, surroundings when I am done with myself is my family. And it's super important to, to have uh, support within the, your immediate surrounding. It can be a family, it can be a group of friends, it could be something third, but it's super important to have support, that they have understanding for what you are going through, especially in initial months or years when you will when you won't make any profit, when you will only have problems, when you will work long hours and there will be virtually no benefits. You, it's really super important that you have somebody who you can rely on and who understands your vision and is there for you, will help you to succeed and will basically help you if you are not able to lift yourself up, to lift yourself up. The same goes for each of you. After we we basically uh, we can go further and we can say there is a third layer ecosystem. Then we can have friends and colleagues, or we can have our clients, or we can have some other set of uh, uh, persons or organizations. But for each of you, I would like you to think of who would be part of your ecosystem and how you would like to have your ecosystem sets in order to be able to, to um, go for your um, dream, go for your business idea. Definitely the only uh, uh, table that I filled in, and this is something that is super important, is the first one that goes uh, uh, without saying it's you. So it, it has to be you in the center of the, your ecosystem. And, uh, but the other tables can be filled with whatever you feel like it will make your ecosystem. And it might help uh, happen that during the time your ecosystem will change. That um, in those tables, other people or other organizations will come and replace the existing ones because the ones that have been there will prove not to be as supportive and did not uh, uh, basically do whatever you were uh, needing them to do. So uh, the only thing that is constant in uh, entrepreneurship life is basically change. And this is something that is that goes hand in hand with the risk prone personality that uh, entrepreneurs pro uh, usually have, because you are able to sustain the change to, um, to live and to adjust with the change much, much better than the regular person. In a way, the change drives you and also makes best out of you. So you are embracing the change the way that it's for your good and not for your bad, 
and this is something that will definitely become i would say mode of your life you will um if you are not already there i believe some of you are there you will just see it as another obstacle and you'll just as i said you will either jump around across it or work around it or dig a hole below it or whatever but you will just go further because you have a, such a drive that you will go further uh, i would say that just as a final uh, conclusion this is something I want you to, to um, remember that um, when I remember that this year when there was um, Ernst and Young um, reward uh, of entrepreneurs of the year and the guy who was giving a speech said that we in Croatian, we don't even have the word for it. He said that the crucial personality trait he thinks each entrepreneur has to have is grit. And as I said, in creation, we don't even have the word for grit. And grit is something that if I can wish you anything in your entrepreneurship journey, this is definitely something that I wish you. I wish you to have the grit, to re refuse to give up, to be persistent and to uh, pursue your own luck, to make your own story, to be as authentic as you wish. And, and I believe that each of you when um, some of you already found it and some of you will, when you find your grit, you will basically be on your way. So I really wish you to, to recognize your grit and to keep it all, all, all along the, the, the entrepreneurship path journey that you are about to take or you are already taking at this moment. So the, the, the key uh, uh, notes that I wanted to share with you, the key lessons that I want you to, to take out of my uh, uh, morning's presentations are basically the stuff that you already have and that you know. Some of you are not already mature enough to be entrepreneurs. Some of you are in between and some of you are completely ready to go for it. And each of, it, uh, each of the status is completely okay. We are here to support you, to help you, to grow, uh, to go through this. We will do uh, uh, individual mentoring classes. We really are here on your side and really want to, to get the best out of this program. The idea is not that each and one, every one of you will have the finished uh, uh, um, product or service at the end of this program. No, take it as a um, uh, ability to expose yourself to new things that will help you uh, when the time is right to, to, to uh, evolve your business idea and to have your own um, entrepreneurship story. So I hope that it was um, interesting and I, that I gave you food for thought and I'm really looking forward to any comments you might have. I'm so sorry that I didn't smile enough because I'm like um, on a sickly with temperature, but nevertheless, usually I smile more. So it's not about you, it's about me. But I hope that uh, it was interesting and please do comment. Thank you, Mariana. It was very inspiring, I think. Uh, so please uh, comment. Or disagree, whatever. <laughs> uh, Mariana, yeah. I, I thought it was really great and I appreciate uh, the word grit like we use that all the time in English that yep. another another word is tenacity where you're just not yep. giving up and yep. we definitely need that to survive I think especially with the bureaucracy here so yeah yeah thank yep. you it was it yep. was it yep. was very good yeah thank you thank very you I agree with you yeah thank you Thank you, Mariana. Despite having a fever, you did a great job. It was really inspiring and I wish you a quick recovery for Thank that. You. Thank you. It was really, really good. I feel really better and I feel like I'm on the right path. I'm doing the right thing. Thank you. Yeah, and, and please do. There are many articles, many uh, things that help that will help you work on yourself as a personality of entrepreneur, and then will help you to endure because the, the path that you are taking is not easy. It's less, it's, it's less traveled, but nevertheless, if you feel, as I say, and you have the courage as, as uh, Trixie says, the tenacity as Heffern says, you need to change something. You basically need 
all the, the support you can get. And I'm happy that we are living in a world where the, the knowledge is one click away and you can basically help yourself by um, just encouraging yourself and see that everybody is, is, is in the same position when they decide to do uh, uh, things that you are about to do. And, and remember that the most successful people in this world are really into, uh, uh, migrants and not the people that start from you know good families with good education and good background because they don't have that grit. For some reason, they are not evolutionally in a position as you are. And in a way it's a burden because you have to do it. If you don't do it, who is going to bring a better change for the world if you are not going to do that? You apparently have that something that is needed in, in these times. So exactly. just go for it. And yeah. they say fortune favors the bold. So yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, don't I don't take this fortune just as financial gainings, but no, like no. it also has some more abstract sides. And it's very valuable. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I, I did my MBA courses and I thought that uh, personality of entrepreneur, entrepreneurship course was the most important because it's also helped me a lot to be able to encourage myself to start my own journey, you know, to leave the comfort of a big law company and, and just do my own uh, uh, stuff. And as I said before, I would never return to that uh, structure again. It's just not, I'm not happy and I could never do that. So. That matters the most. I mean, finding what makes you happy and go for it. Yeah. It's not easy. It takes a lot of sacrifice, sacrifices and everything hard work, but if it, at the end of the day, it pays off. If you feel better, then you are on the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's a privilege to be your own boss and to do what you love. Uh, I have the similar experience as Mariana. I also worked in the um, corporate sector. I worked on a private television in Croatia, and I decided that I want to do something on my own. So yeah, it was difficult at start, of course, but now I'm, I'm really happy that I did that. Really, really happy asking because you're already entrepreneurs like what are the main issues that you faced at the beginning like uh, at the beginning phase of your uh, startup what are the main issues i would say that the because you are um you are used especially if you worked before the salary was coming there was enough money to meet your uh, needs. And when you are an entrepreneur, there is no salary. Nobody is going to pay your uh, bills, your invoices, and you have to uh, basically either sell your service or product or have, have some kind of uh, money aside that can help you through first initial phase, a month or two or six or even a year, it depends what kind of things you are doing. There are people that work for three years for really, really, without any kind of uh, salary. But th that um, th the idea that you are not uh, just handling the fear that there will be not enough money to pay all the invoices and that you are a failure because you are not able to um, close all of your uh, obligations, meaning pay all the invoices that you are having. Like if you are opening an office, you have to pay the lease, you have to pay the utility bills, you have to pay to your accountant, you have to pay to other uh, things that supply you, uh, the people that supply you their services and products. And you really f uh, feel a huge burden that you are not going to be able to meet that. You will, you will hear during the program, that usually um, each, I, I always remember you all know Mate Rimac. And he was five or six years ago, he was living, uh, giving a lecture for MBA um, association. And then he said that when they were basically doing his first electric uh, uh, car, he was in a situation that before going to Geneva, the guys from the gas company came and wanted to basically, because they were having so much debts for a gas uh, uh, um, uh, um, 
that they couldn't pay because they didn't have money. They had to put all of their resources to the model of the car that were taken to Geneva. They were so uh, uh, basically in a position that he didn't even know if they are going to succeed, but really like to, to, to the very moment when you, you are making something so big, so huge, the fastest electric car in the world. Nobody believes in your dream. You have number of people that you managed to persuade to come on board that gave up their regular jobs that believe in your dream because you inspire them you and then the guy comes from the city gas company and says we have to cut off your uh, gas supply and then you know if he does that you won't be able to go to geneva and present the fastest electric car in the world and then you somehow manage to persuade him not to do that on that day because you hope that you will be able to, you know, get enough money for the salaries and everything. So you basically have many of these kind of moments when you go to uh, selling meetings with your clients and then there is no follow up on the or they want something completely different from you that you can't offer and you are basically thinking whether I should do what they ask from me and not what I want to sell to them just because I will get some money out of it. And these are all things that you are constantly battling with, especially at the beginning, because it's super hard to be authentic. It's super hard to do your own story. And it's super hard really to bring value to your clients, something that they see that uh, supports their business, that uh, makes their life better, and that they are willing to pay the price for, the price that you are asking and the price that will make your business uh, 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 journey ahead so these are i believe and, and this is something that is especially hard when you start um, from the position that you are leaving a, a steady job and having every month salary i believe when you are on uh, starting from scratch like you never worked anyone probably it's easier because you know that everything that you earn uh, is basically what you have but just switching between those two words having a salary and going on your own and not having enough to meet the ends. It's, it, it was super hard for me. And this is something that I usually hear from others uh, that are on the same journey, that these are the problems that they encounter. But Marusha, maybe you can add or <clears throat> comment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, yes, I agree with you, Mariana. Uh, for me, it was the same. Uh, of course, I was anxious um, because of, uh, as you said, you don't have a salary. Uh, when I worked on television, I was, uh, I knew that uh, every uh, month the salary will come and it would be enough for me at that time. And now you don't have it. So I um, couldn't do it without uh, support of uh, people around me that, uh, that uh, stayed <laughs> with me and that uh, well they were uh, they were telling me so you can do it it's um, it's a good uh, path for you so th that was very important for me so I think um, that's the reason for example why this incubator and this uh, um, workshops are so important because you need to have support on that path uh, there 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 was a day well there were days there is a day, uh, still now there are the days that are so difficult uh, difficult for for me uh, of course i think that every um, entrepreneur every person that uh, is trying to do something on their on their own um, have that kind of days when you think that uh, you can't you can't do something or that your business wants to uh, succeed and um, that is so difficult that maybe uh, you should give up uh, i think that uh, every uh, entrepreneur uh, sometimes uh, thinks something <laughs> as uh, something like that so um, i think the, that that uh, support is very um, important. Uh, so the good thing is that uh, we have uh, this kind uh, of um, incubators, so workshops. So if you don't have maybe support from your family or your friends because they don't understand why 
why do you want to do something like this are you out of your mind why why don't you just uh, find a job a steady job um so um when you don't have support from your um family for example and friends as i said uh, this kind of um, support is uh, i think uh, welcome for uh, each and every of us so um uh, i think that we can uh, continue now uh, do you maybe need some kind of break or something no we can continue <coughs> right now great so now now uh, we will have uh, our second uh, lecture uh, regarding marketing so jay koriha is here he's uh, well he can introduce himself <laughs> yeah so morning everyone um I hope you are now much more awake than one hour before. Uh, thanks, Mariana, for a great presentation. It's really uh, nice to see that, you know, we are all in the same, I would say, boat because we all have here similar stories. Mine was also pushed into the private, uh, like, entrepreneurship. Uh, and before I was also working for large businesses and yeah, I'm still uh, between those two worlds. And for me, it's really difficult. But what I want to say is that um, I found out that you need to be persistent in what you are doing. And, the, and one of the, I would say, greatest burdens that you have is that all tasks that you uh, need to do are the tasks that you give yourself every day. And that's something that you know, it's really for a willpower. So um, when you start your business, one of the first things that uh, uh, you need to think about is uh, sales and marketing. Uh, I would say even before you have a product, you have to think about sales and marketing because uh, one of the best products that we are using today are the products that are made directly for the market. Uh, directly for the customers so uh, it's better to listen first it's better to listen customers and to see uh, what kind of product they they want what is the the your opportunity there and then introduce the product and then start selling it's much more easier than you know just uh, come to the market with something new and, and just try to push it so uh, to keep it simple i would say you know, it's do your research first, because, you, you know, for instance, you want to have a, I don't know, a, a butchery or a, uh, or kebab place, and you didn't do your research and you came in a city where all people are vegans or majority, so you will have difficulties, stuff like that, that people often forget, but there are basic steps. So um, today I will share uh, with you some uh, basic steps uh, in, in which direction you will start to think and you will start, you know, to like a small checklist before you even start with, you know, uh, uh, full force on the market with the, with, the, with the company and everything. So let me just share a screen with you. Mm. So let's have an introduction to marketing. Before we start, uh, 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 we will cover some topics. Uh, so as I said, where and how do we start? Uh, what do we need? What are some basics? And, and what are some tips and tricks? And also an example. And it's nice that I have an example for Marusha's uh, uh, business venture or when she switched from the corporate uh, television to, to, to private sector. And this is something that uh, it was really, uh, I would say, done in, in, in very basic, but, uh, but very efficient way. So um, first thing are three books that I always recommend. If you didn't see them, uh, write them down. Those three books are really cheap to find. And I would say they are giving you a great insight on uh, early 
uh, early steps uh, of you know starting a business from marketing side and also from developing uh, a new product so one of them is uh, traction which is important if you 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 can have two uh, two paths i would say first path is you are doing everything on your own and you are maybe uh, seeking uh, money from a bank or uh, you know how it is in the early stages sometimes there are friends and families uh, there but also you can build a business and seek uh, investor funds so investments and here investors always are looking for traction so the first key uh, first uh, book is great for basically that how any startup can achieve explosion customer growth and, and traction. Uh, the, the main book is The Lean Startup, uh, which is now the old, but I would say uh, still efficient methodology of, uh, of developing a product for the market. Uh, today, you will find also a newer term, I would say like design thinking. And I would say that design thinking uh, took a lot of uh, things from the Lean Startup methodology, but they're really similar. And this is marketing from Seth Godin is, I would say, one of the up-to-date uh, marketing Bibles about everything that he's doing. So these would be uh, great uh, for a start for you and also give you uh, good marketing fundamentals. Um, that's why the Seth Godin said that, you know, in, in a crowded marketplace, uh, fitting in is failing. And in a busy marketplace, not standing out is the same thing as being visible. And this is something that it's really easy to understand, but uh, really difficult to achieve and difficult to, you know, found, uh, find yourself in a busy marketplace. And I would say that, uh, if you are starting uh, and looking only in Croatia as a marketplace, it's really busy, it's really crowded. Uh, what is good is that you can start from Croatia and do business with European Union, then the marketplace is larger, but also busy. And um, it's really important to uh, think how to stand out. And I would say that you are definitely having stand out better than people living uh, uh, in those countries or living in particular in Croatia. Uh, uh, we in marketing and sales always talk about unique selling proposition, USP. What is unique selling proposition uh, from you? Uh, I would say that your unique selling proposition is all the knowledge and experience culture uh, and everything that you are bringing from the countries that, are, uh, uh, that you were born. So you are something new in every market that you are uh, present. Uh, the same thing uh, applies from us. Uh, for instance, uh, we are selling our services uh, mainly to the UK companies and uh, we have unique selling proposition that we are not coming from the UK. We have some different experience and that's why we have in some uh, some way we have some uh, things that are better than uh, domestic uh, UK consultants like us so um, in every country in every market uh, if you are bringing something new if you are coming from some other place uh, uh, from marketing side and from the sales side uh, don't look at it as uh, something bad or uh, as a burden that you have uh, much more uh, more opposite you are you are having something uh, better than the local people who was born and and raised in that marketplace so think about it think about you know don't don't be ashamed of of things that you are bringing think about how you can uh, you know present them and and how you can implement them in those uh, new marketplaces and new environments because people are always in in whatever uh, type of industry you are from business to customer or business to business customer if you are looking at it as a person they're always looking for something new something exciting something that uh, they are not familiar with or something that you know they are not born with or uh, similar things for for instance you know if you are going to retail or uh, you know food productions uh, well customer is always uh, wanting to try new new things, new food, not always to eat uh, the same food uh, with 
that he was born with. So we always try new stuff. So from that perspective, uh, you are in in really good uh, position. Um, so how uh, and and where uh, do we start? Well, for simple, you know, ask yourselves these kind of questions. You know, what I'm doing? What is my service? Uh, uh, who will be uh, my uh, customers, uh, who is my competition and what are prices, do some uh, small, uh, you know, research. And, and, and then, you know, uh, start building uh, some kind of a plan, uh, uh, do some, you know, digital, I, I, I always call them the digital marketing buzzwords, you know, some social media marketing, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, and, and things uh, like that. But uh, first and foremost, you start, you know, you start what, what I'm doing, you know, what, what, uh, what will I, uh, what will be my service on the product? Then second, who is doing the same or similar thing uh, like me? If I find them, great, analyze their website, try to find out, uh, you know, who are their customers, what are their prices? And, um, you know, uh, for a retail, it's really simple. You know, if I want to open a new bakery in, I don't know, Zagreb, in some kind of, you know, part of the Zagreb, then I can just, you know, in, in one afternoon, now uh, today is really nice day in Zagreb, so you can just walk around in, in that neighborhood, see, you know, what are the bakeries, uh, enter, try the food, you know, this is the research, you know, <laughs> find the prices and, and things like that. If you are, you know, in business to business, then uh, if I want to find out, and, and this is the thing that we did um, of, well, a lot of times is that, you know, you're like counterintelligence service. So you open a fake email account and then you send an email. That, so uh, they send you their, you know, offer. They ask you about the prices. These are the legitimate things that, you, you know, you need to find what are the prices or how do you, uh, you know, how they present themselves. And then you define your, uh, as I said, unique selling proposition or USP. What is, uh, you know, what are your strengths and, and, and how, you know, how to present them. Uh, today is, you know, we are entering uh, 2022. So uh, uh, my, uh, my position is that every business, whatever you did, you, uh, whatever you're doing, you have to have a website. And it's really easy to have a website. So, you know, even if you are doing 90% offline things, you should have a website. Uh, for instance, uh, I helped uh, several uh, butchery shops who transform themselves on the website. Even if they are butcheries, they don't have, you know, they are selling meat. They are not, you know, having any kind of uh, web shop or something like that. But People are exploring new products and new services online, and 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 you have to be uh, online. Um, so uh, to build a website, it's really simple. If you uh, if you have done it, you know that simple. If you uh, if you didn't done done it, so you can use WordPress. Uh, you can go to the services like GoDaddy, buy a domain, for example, you know, mybusiness.coffee. If you are opening a coffee shop in, in, in Zagreb, then it's nice to have some kind of custom, you know, domain. It's really uh, yearly uh, subscription is really cheap. So uh, as Mariana said, you know, if you are starting and you don't have funding, you have limited uh, resources, then uh, every a pound every dollar every euro counts so you know make it uh, make it as most useful as it is so uh, you can even with basic and I, i'm a guy who is in marketing i'm not you know developer i'm not programmer so i can build a website on, on wordpress it's really simple um, and then you know write the content you know, it's it's also simple to 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 explain what you do. It's simple in your words. And uh, where you when you have you know when you have a problem in in um, when you have language problems, for instance, uh, we have here. Uh, did I did I get it right? A person from Iran, Iraq. Yeah, Iraq, so, Iraq, Iraq. Iraq. So <laughs> so yeah. So if if I would 
like to go to Iraq, you know, and start a business and, and start a website, then I would definitely write everything, you know, in my own language or maybe in English. And then you can easily find for, I say also, there are a lot of services for cheap, you know, like 10, 20 dollars. I could find people who are native in your language and then they would, uh, you know, translate, rewrite it and, and help me get my content for the website. So it's really easy in today, uh, in today to you know, get translations in even uh, languages that are not even similar you know, to us. For, you know, for us in, in here in Croatia, in Europe, I would say that you know, I would much more easy to, uh, it would be much more easy for me to understand your language than Hungarian, which is like Klingon. You know, Hungarians are really, having a difficult language and and you you know if you want to sell something in budapest then you know you, you would definitely need to hire a translator so what i want to say is that you know write your own content in your own words but if you need help you can easily find the help to to translate to any language uh, that you wish always you can start with english and you know uh, i always say that you know uh, if a person doesn't read english or doesn't know english then maybe you know we cannot work together yes. and and you can also use a google translate you know it's it's uh, better and better every day so um write the content about you know uh, about uh, what you want to sell you know what you want to do what is your service what is great is always uh, put your personal story behind it, you know, um, and I will, I will uh, always, you know, we always see example of uh, Marusha's business and this is a personal story. She worked for the television and now she is a great, you know, media and public speaking trainer because she worked there. So personal story is great, you know, what you are bringing from, uh, from your own uh, country. And it doesn't need to have, you know, uh, doesn't need to have the similar experience in what you are doing now. But you, it can bring you, you know, it, it definitely can, uh, you know, inspire people to do business with you because you are having that personal touch, which is much more better than, you know, not, not having it. And uh, the third thing I would say is, you know, find your audience that will trans transform into customers. And that's basically what I said uh, before, you know, uh, are you selling your products or services to the another companies, to the businesses or to the customers who are, you know, entering your store or your business place every day, or maybe you're working with the government, maybe you have something that you think that you know public service uh, would like to have from you buy from you and, and things like that then uh, you think about who are your desired customers we are always uh, in marketing terms we uh, we are talking about marketing personas uh, so for example um, i will i will uh, bring back to you know uh, like here example, I'm selling red shoes and I will have red shoes on my website, shoes, pictures, articles, and, and things like that. So who are my uh, customers? Well, I'm trying to find if, are, if there are women red shoes, then I'm finding a women who like red, uh, who would like to try red shoes. So you're trying to you know, figure it out who is that person? You know, it's a woman living in Zagreb. Uh, she is from 25 to, I would know, 40, 45, 50 years of age. She is working. Uh, she like uh, new clothes. She like new design clothes. She likes to try new things, maybe new red shoes. And, and, and when you write those things down, then you can uh, much more easy to find that, that person and, and God bless for Facebook and, and Google and all those, you know, digital marketing channels that can really help you uh, to nail down and to, to be precise in targeting those, uh, those people. Well, uh, for example, that's why uh, that this is similar how we are trying to find uh, immigrants for this uh, project, you know, how to find people who are from out other countries here in Croatia to join our program is also through, you know, Facebook and, and, and Google through, uh, through targeting uh, our messages to those people. Um, well, uh, speaking of uh, digital marketing, uh, there are three, I would say, terms that you will, uh, you will, uh, 
find, you will, you know, get uh, familiar with. Uh, the first one is search engine optimization. You know, when you are Googling things and, and one thing is, uh, why is one article better, you know, on, on better uh, rank on the page than other, that's optimization. You can also advertise on, on, on uh, search engine marketing, you know, Google ads, YouTube ads, you know, if you are building an app, for Android or iOS, you can easily advertise it. And then we are talking about social media marketing. Uh, I can presume that everybody is using social media here on this call. So, you know, you'll find out for Instagram promoted stories or ads, uh, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, you know, whatever. So there are three, I would say, channels that you can use. They're really cost effective. You can start with really uh, low. This is why I'm talking about those channels, you know, because uh, your initial investment can be really, uh, really low, but uh, you can really fast see uh, some kind of results, you know, if you are doing something good or, or not. Um, my philosophy is always, you know, uh, learning by doing, then, you know, you will uh, have much more experience and you, you will learn much more when you start, you know, doing that for yourself. Um, so as I said, you know, uh, uh, ads, uh, this for example, for, uh, you know, summer in, in 2021 in, in Croatia, so Ljetovanje, uh, a lot of ads are there because uh, here you can also see, for example, if you want to sell in Croatia, uh, I don't know, summer packages, uh, vacation packages uh, for the summer, then you can see by the ads, alone that you have a lot of competition there so it's really easy to then you know to see what they're offering what are their prices so you can easily find them on on, on google and there is a lot of their four ads on on google and then uh, search engine optimization is uh, uh, down below so this is not paid uh, this is not paid um, result and also you can see these as tours they are doing this thing very well because in in uh, um, you can find let me just uh, okay like that so you can see that uh, sorry uh, that as tours has an ad but also as tours has a, a organic result so there are the so you can run an ad and also you can um, you can uh, you know you can uh, have an SEO and pay it. Um, oh, let me just okay, one of the the so eleven years ago, uh, a guy made a great experiment on, on, on Google. And which is great to, you know, to show you how, you know, how uh, you can use Google in, in different ways. So he was trying to find a job. And let me just share with you this. So yeah, a guy found a job for six dollars, and uh, I can I can definitely uh, tell you that you know this kind of tactic that this guy uh, did uh, is really working. Uh, we did several tactics uh, uh, similar to this, but not looking for a job, but as a startups looking for investments. 
Uh, so if you are, you know, if you are a real startup, they are looking investors. Then one of your main tasks is to find the perfect venture capital fund or the perfect accelerator that you will be in their program or you will get their uh, funding. Then find uh, who are the key people there. You know, you can find easily on their website. And then uh, you basically do this. You know, you take their name and surname, put them in a Google ad, uh, put a personalized message and, and just, you know, uh, draw attention to yourself. You know, say, hey, uh, we are here, we are looking something exciting and we think that, you know, maybe this will be something useful for you. Check it out. Um, I did uh, the similar thing uh, for the our workshop for the startups. So for Ivo Spiegel, who is mentor here, uh, I made those ads uh, just to show the participants how easy it is to, you know, to uh, to build an ad uh, for you know for the person who is you know who is in your uh, I would say target. Why is that important? Because uh, most I would say over ninety percent of uh, investors who are uh, you know they are really careful and they are really watching about online reputation. So they are uh, carefully watching, you know, what uh, people are saying about them, what are maybe uh, media writing about them. And that's why uh, they can easily find out, you know, because they are Googling themselves, you know, uh, they're watching out for that and they easily can find the, uh, the, the ad, you know. So this is the example also how Google ads are, are working. Um, social media uh, marketing, as you know, as you uh, maybe saw our promoted posts, our ads, uh, it's really, you know, simple to, to promote everything that you do. For example, if you're opening a shop and you're selling something, maybe a flower shop or, or a similar thing, then, you know, you can build an event, then promote that event. And uh, what is great about uh, digital marketing in, in general is that, you uh, you always pay by action. You know you can easily pay by action. You pay by view if you are running YouTube ad. You are paying by click if you are running uh, running any kind of ad. So if a person clicks on your ad, then you know you get some uh, you get charge. Um, to sum up, really simple. You know you build your website. You put your content there. You know you write uh, things about yourself, your business, why you are doing that that you are doing, and then you know you pick a, so a social media that is a channel that is uh, the best for you. So if you are doing something visual, something with uh, you know with design, with some kind of creativity, maybe. Uh, then the Instagram is the great channel for you. You know, you can even sell through Instagram. You can sell through Facebook. Uh, maybe you don't have uh, to have your website. If you are selling some, uh, there is a service called Etsy, uh, which is really uh, simple for all people. They are doing something at their homes, you know, some kind of uh, arrangements with flowers or, or, I don't know, paintings and stuff like that. And then you can uh, list those things on Etsy and Etsy is a big marketplace and then start selling uh, there your product. So uh, uh, today it's really, uh, I would say definitely simpler uh, to find those kind of jobs and, and solutions than, than before, because if you're offering, uh, for instance, uh, you know, a language, you, you can translate to other people, uh, you know, from, English to your uh, native language, then you can set up on Upwork or similar servers and people can hire you, you know, to, to translate those things. So these are all the good starts, you know, uh, good things to start with. And uh, one of the, I would say, great things about entrepreneurship is that uh, sometimes you will do things that you don't want to do now, but they are providing some kind of money. So th that money you can invest in a business that you actually want to do. So, uh, you know, for instance, if, if, the, if the translating things on, uh, or selling things on Etsy is paying the bills now, but you have a vision to have your own web shop and stuff like that, great. 
do both those things. That's what, you know, un entrepreneurs are doing. You know, Elon Musk is having Tesla and producing, you know, electric cars, but he wants to go to Mars. You know, he wants to go to, to space. So he needs to do something that will finance his uh, ultimate goal. Um, one uh, important thing is that, you know, social media is really important. Uh, definitely when you are uh, doing something with customers, with end customers, if you are in, uh, you know, if you have a restaurant or some kind of food court or things like that, then uh, you really need to pay attention about what are customers talking about your uh, your business because, and you can influence that, you know, some sometimes, <clears throat> you know, people are just people and sometimes you can have a bad day maybe your bread or maybe you know meat wasn't in, uh, good enough but then you know you can say always I, I saw a lot of examples uh, about u.s restaurants how you know they help themselves on, on social media when some person say well i was there and it was rubbish the food was i don't know not, not good enough and one of the simplest things that they did was you know said yeah we are sorry it was a bad day for our cook you know come again on our expense and and try give us another chance it's it's much you know in in business if you act and if you uh, uh if you act like human then uh, you will get good uh, good reactions uh, so what is some trips and uh, tips and tricks here Smart advertising, what I'm calling smart advertising is give, uh, you know, we uh, give a value proposition, give something, you know, what you can offer, not just saying, hey, I'm, you know, I'm selling red shoes. Nobody cares because a lot of people are selling red shoes. But if you say, you know, uh, uh, if you maybe give an advice that those red shoes can be a great fit with those you know occasions or those clothes then uh, uh, then you are giving some value proposition to that you know uh, also uh, uh, if you are selling product on the web shop you know educate about the product give as much information as you can because we we come you know i'm i'm crazy about researching when i'm trying to buy something and i'm i'm not you know I'm Googling about, for instance, winter tires for the car. You know, it's a process of three, three weeks, you know, researching tests, asking people, you know, crazy things like that. Uh, uh, and people are doing that. So uh, you can definitely influence their, you know, opinion and give all the information uh, that you have. Straightforward ads means, you know, be direct, be honest. You know, maybe, you know, for instance, maybe we are not the cheapest uh, kebab in the in the city, but we are, you know, we are worth of trying, you know, or we, we have something that others don't. So, you know, uh, be direct and be honest what, what you are doing and use call to action, you know, always, you know, always, if it's a website, then check it out, you know, learn more, find out, visit our website. If it is a, you know, physical place, come and visit us. We are working today. It's a beautiful day. So, you know, uh, uh, always use these kind of calls uh, to action. Have in mind your unique selling proposition. Have in mind, you know, uh, why you are doing that and, 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 and what is your, you know, unique thing. And learn. It's free. I always say that uh, everything you can learn about, you know, digital marketing, Google ads, and everything is is free on Google Digital Garage. So there are no excuses, you know, that uh, the knowledge is not available. And I would say uh, that people who, even if you didn't, you know, have a major in economics or marketing. It doesn't matter because people who are just, you know, listening about marketing on a university versus people who did everything on Google Dig Digital Garage and, and, and experience from themselves. If I'm hiring a digital marketing person, I would definitely go with the person who has a knowledge from Google Digital Garage than a person who is get all that knowledge on, on, on university or on, or on college. Why? Because it's up to date. It's, you know, it's applied knowledge. And in digital marketing, you just need to know how to build campaigns. And 
yeah, learning by doing. So don't be afraid, you know, just start, you know, try to, you know, spend 100 kunas, 200 kunas, you will see results. It's, it's really uh, easy to, to start with. Um, for example, for uh, Marus's uh, public speaking uh, courses. So uh, very simple, first build a website, you know, uh, uh, give a unique selling proposition. And I definitely agree here is that, you know, when you, uh, when Marusha is training you, then you overcame the fear of public speaking. And that's something that, you know, everybody has. Uh, uh, and that's why we put it like a unique selling proposition. Then, you know, build an ads. You know, if people are searching for a, uh, for a public speaking course, then they will find the, the key message and they will find an ad. It's really simple. You know, people are searching those things. Uh, we advertise those things. We explain them on their websites. And basically, if they are interesting, uh, interested about that service, they send an email and, and that's it. So it's really, you know, it's really simple. And, and as I said before, I'm not a developer, but I build the website, you know, on the WordPress. It's really, really easy to, you know, understand. Uh, also build some kind of content. So if your people are, uh, you know, afraid of public speaking, then write a the content about it. You know, if you, are, uh, if you find why are people Googling or, or, you know, finding about it, then give the content to, content to that. And... That's it from me. Uh, if you have any questions, you can, you know, you can tweet me, find me on LinkedIn, find me on Facebook, send me an email or, you know, whatever uh, you like. So now what I'm open for questions and answers. Yeah. Q&A. Great. Yes. Uh, maybe you stop sharing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will stop share. Okay. Uh, okay. Did I sh st uh, stop sharing? Okay. Mute. <laughs> We're in the same space. So <laughs> when I'm talking, <laughs> I hear myself on <laughs> Jaco's computer. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jaco. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, and uh, please do ask uh, Jaco uh, questions. Are there, are there any questions or comments or anything you want to share? Uh, yeah, actually, it was really great, Velko. Thank you for the resources. That's really, really helpful. And I, you were showing us the books and I kept thinking one of them looked really familiar. And <laughs> Perfect, perfect, just perfect. Yeah. I haven't read it yet, but I will, so. Yeah, definitely for winter days, best, best book. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Thank you. I also don't have a question, but a comment. So I have my master degrees in marketing from Croatia. And it was like one of the lectures I'm having with my professors. So it was so professional, but it was not too technical. So you uh, just uh, transmitted your message with the words that we can understand with the, uh, every, uh, uh, everyday uh, words and words with so many good so many good things. Things. Thank, thank you thank you for that. Thank, thank you for the thank feedback. This really means a lot to me. So thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jacob. Thank you all for uh, comments. Um, this is um, well. This was uh, the second and the last of uh, our lecture for today. So. Please, if you uh, want to ask uh, some questions, if you want to share something with us, this is the um, right time to do that. Uh, if not, uh, we will arrange our next meeting. But before that, please, uh, do you have something more to share uh, with us regarding today's workshop or regarding this uh, incubator program? If you want something, well, if you need something, uh, some specific uh, lecture or workshop, uh, please tell us that and we will arrange it. Uh, if you don't know now, maybe um, you have time, you can send us an email and we will uh, do that. One question, Marusha. Mm -hmm. So yes. will you share the recording with us? Because my teammate Zeynep, she couldn't make it. She couldn't uh, join. I texted her, but she didn't reply. Maybe she has some uh, issue. I don't know. Maybe internet connectivity is something. I don't know. 
So will you share with us so that she can watch? Yes, yes, of course. We are recording everything. So uh, I will share with you. It will be uh, on our YouTube channel, but I will send you uh, a link um, in the email, of course. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that this was actually not what I thought it would be. It's even better. So <laughs> I um, am really happy to know that there's a, a community we can turn to for support. And I love the idea of an ecosystem. That That's great. We, we can uh, share resources and ask each other for help. It, it makes me feel a lot calmer about about moving forward. So thanks for reaching out. I was really not sure what the program was and you kept saying, oh, this, this. I'm like, I don't think I fit it, but <laughs> it's, it's really perfect. So thank you very much. Yeah, uh, sorry. I, I would just uh, add from my side, you know, marketing and think, please, you know, be free to uh, reach out. You know, if you are starting to, you know, if you want to build a website, if you build a Google campaign, you can easily, you know, you just ask me, I will, you know, uh, check it out. I will give you feedback, you know, and, and we can work together. So, uh, yeah, you regarding, you know, my side, bar marketing and things like that, you are covered. So don't, oh, don't be. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It was so nice to hear uh, that Trixie. I'm very glad. Um, so uh, the next work workshop we will have um, in December, uh, just a second, uh, I need to check the date, so I. Uh, um, uh, it will. It would be on on the eighteenth or eighteenth of uh, December, but I will send you uh, all the information in the email as well. Um, before that, we will have um, a biweekly meeting. Um, uh, it it would be on uh, Tuesdays, Mariana. I'm I'm speaking correctly yeah uh, of course I will send you an email as well so uh, we will arrange uh, everything and we will talk about that uh, in the next uh, few days we also um, made a Facebook group uh, migrant talent garden incubator so if you aren't a part of that group yet please join us Yes, so uh, we uh, we thought that that would be a good thing, a good place for us to share ideas, uh, to communicate easily. So please join us. Uh, Just to add something regarding this bi-weekly, the mm -hmm. idea is to help you with your individual weekly, bi-weekly goals. So you are basically setting the goals for your project yourself, and we are here to discuss them, to support you, to help you, to go further to advance through the program. So the form is more or less similar as, as this one online uh, uh, discussion group. But the thing is that we try to see in which particular uh, phase each of your project is and to help you with concrete support, also to support you to reach the next uh, thing that you want to do. So basically it's more about support and more about see the progress through the program. So these bi weeklies will be all about you. So whatever you need, whatever you desire that we bring to it. And this is also good because you will be able to, we will be able and you will be able to ask us to see what do you need so we can bring the, the people that can be mentors or that can give lectures on specific topics that you will require in, at this uh, phase of each of one respective pro project. So please do join us on B Weeklies and, and we are here to support you to succeed. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mariana. So you will uh, have all the informations on the email. Um, and uh, please do think if you need something, if you uh, need some kind of uh, specific uh, lecture or anything, just send us an email. Um, if you don't have any questions, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> Could you add me to the email list? Yes, yes, I did that uh, already. So okay. uh, from uh, this day on, you will uh, get all the emails. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. So that's it. <laughs>
it was uh, very nice to see you all and uh, see you next time. Yeah. Thank you for Thank joining. You. And have a great weekend. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.